reasons, relationships ended. According to Reddit, number 20. I once broke up with a woman who called me at work to ask me who the woman was that commented a smiley face on a meme I posted on Facebook. It wasn't so much the fact that she asked, but it was the way that she asked. Who the fuck is this bitch leaving smileys all over your pic? Literally 10 seconds after she commented, like she was staring at the picture, waiting for someone to comment. Some people would pay for this kind of treatment, but for the rest of us normals, you know what I mean? Knock it the fuck off, bitch. Take it down a notch. What is this, the eighth grade? Number 19. She started ignoring me because I had canceled going to see her because I had to take my daughter to the emergency dentist. We live in the same place within walking distance, so it's not like I was canceling the only time that we'd get to meet up for ages. I told her to go get fucked because we were both in our 30s and shit happens. It was only after I cut her off that I realized how much hard work she was as a mate. Oh boy, it's a two-way street. Maybe both people should be breaking their back so that it doesn't seem like the hardest of work. Hard work is having kids and trying to keep them from killing themselves and trying to be available for them when they're pieces of shit. When you're just together, come the fuck on, man. Too old for this shit. Number 18, she invited this guy that she was chatting with to come hang out with us one day. She had a long-term boyfriend while I was freshly single. This guy and I really hit it off, so we started to spend more time together, and when she found out, she got so mad. She told me that I stole her backup guy. Her boyfriend dumped her shortly after, and she demanded that I stop talking to him so that she could start dating him as she had previously planned, insisting that he was her soulmate. Oh yeah? I stopped talking to her instead, and so did he. That was 20 years ago, and we're still together. 15 years of marriage and two kids. Guess he wasn't her soulmate after all. She loves telling this story. Number 17. They were using me as their unpaid therapist. Ah, you letting them use them? Come on, man. You letting them use your bitch ass? I was starting to dread hanging out because I knew I'd be emotionally exhausted by the end of the night. Look, man. Relationships are a give and take. If you set yourself up to just make it so that they only only take, shit. Welcome to doormat life. Number 16, he turned out to be a pedo. Didn't need a lot of words, this one. So there's your kid diddling entry of the list. And it's also the shortest and the, the most horrifying. There you go. There you, number 15. She kept cutting me down. Now, I was very overweight and I was aware of it but she kept letting me know. Like she said, she loved to go with me to the mall because if I was there, then no guys would bother us. I was too naive and lonely to see how terrible she was. Well, over the span of a few years, I lost 100 pounds. She did not like this and was even meaner to me. I met a guy and she tried to steal him from me. It didn't work. We're no longer friends. Here's the thing, she was only 20 pounds smaller than me when I was fat. She didn't see herself that way though, they never do. We gonna be living trying to understand how fat and ugly people have such incredible confidence that, you know, they'd be on a roof with a, a, a fucking towel wrapped around their neck, cape billowing in the wind talking about, you know what? They just start reciting R. Kelly songs and jump off. If I can see it. Number 14. When we were driving and he was in the wrong lane driving into oncoming traffic for a good five seconds. He was high and drunk and I never hung out with him again. How you get in the car with a motherfucker you don't know they high and drunk? Both? Come on now. See, when I read the first part of this, I thought it was like a, like a, you know like a toxic relationship with two people and they're kind of playing chicken in the car, just like, oh, I'm so sick of you and your bullshit. I'll kill us both right now, right now. Get out of the oncoming lane. Number 13, she was flying to Ireland to meet some guy that she'd become friends with online and wanted me to come with her so she wouldn't be on the flight alone or die alone, you know? 
I said, sure, why not? I love traveling and I don't want you to get murdered. Murdered alone. The guy turned out to be both real and very nice. But she spent the entire time we were there putting me down in front of him to look cool. Damn, what y'all in eighth grade? I didn't even like this guy. I was living with my boyfriend, but she was so threatened for some reason. By the second day of getting mocked relentlessly, I was like, fuck it, and spent the rest of this trip exploring Dublin on my own. <sighs> you know, be safe, white girls. Once we got home, she and I had a conversation where I basically told her, I don't think either of us thought that went well, and we never talked to again. Well, I like the uh, amicable, you know, break up here at the end. So that, that that bitch can go on considering herself as anything but the problem. <laughs> you know, she was the issue, but uh, she's going to go away going, I had this friend, I invited her out, and she was just a piece of, she was so jealous of me. Like, she'll spin it into all kinds of bullshit. Number 12, my brother came to pay me a visit. Oh, I bet he paid you a visit, all right. A visit that'll cost you. After spending the entire day with my girlfriend, it was time to see my brother, as we hadn't seen each other in quite some time. We made some snacks and set to begin playing Lord of the Rings, which we both enjoy. Playing, huh? She dialed my number and had a lengthy phone conversation with me. I mentioned that my brother is waiting for me, and she responded that I am not allowed to spend my time with anyone else since it belongs to her. I'm sorry, I like, I, I, I literally, there's no cameras in here, but I literally pulled away to like, look at the, like, bitch, what you, you say that again, say that again. It was the last time the two of us spoke. Where's my soundboard, bro? Yeah, you damn right, buddy. I need to get some cheers on there. And then he looked at his brother and was like, all right, step bro. You know what I'm talking about? You guys know what I'm talking about? Woo! This was actually for uh, uh, entry 11, which is deleted. What am I? I'm going to gleam from the response what it could have been. The response reads, Seems you met my cousin. He isn't allowed near my house after he came over drunk one night with a machete and threatening to kill some guy that I don't know. He was hacking at my fence and the police came over to arrest him. His parents tried to persuade and guilt and threaten me into not pressing charges, but it turns out it doesn't even matter if I did as the police charged him with a list of crimes. And even though he didn't get prison time, he now has a record. Who knows what 11 could have been? Here lies number 11. Number 10, he was a junkie. His family had cut him off and cut him out. I'd driven him to rehab twice. The last time he got out of rehab, he had nowhere to go. So I said he could move in with me until he could find somewhere to live. Things were going well for him, and out of the blue, I get called away for work. I was gone for a week, and when I get back, everything in my apartment was gone. Except for my guitar which was my great-grandfather's and my grandfather's before it was mine. At least he left me that. I never heard from him again. He's dead now. <sighs> oh my God. What a stain to leave on people's lives. Jesus. Number nine. They couldn't understand working a full 9 to 5 meant that I could randomly go out drinking until 2 a.m. during the week. Oh, could not. So I guess you just had friends that are just like, Bro, what do you mean you don't want to come party, bro? What do you mean? You're always talking about your wife and kid, bro. I don't understand. How can you come party, bro? Bitch, you, they got a job. They got obligations. I just don't get it. Well, when you got dumb friends, you got dumb friends. Shit. Number nine minus one. 
This girl wanted to hang out and immediately invited me to a passion party, which I googled and came to the misunderstanding that it was a party where people bring their sex toys to show everyone. It sounded super weird, and I didn't know how I felt about bringing my fleshlight. I kind of just ghosted her. Later I realized that passion parties are a multi-level marketing scheme? And this bitch was trying to sell dildos and shit? Nobody brings used toys. I can only imagine what would have happened if I had brought my fleshlight. Hi guys, there's my fleshlight. What the fuck? You like this model? Why does it look old? It's, 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 what, I, it's what I used. It's my fleshlight. Number seven. He had already shown very jealous tendencies. Smacked me over the head because he thought I was looking at a guy, so it, was, it wasn't good already. We were outside of his friend's house, and his friends asked how I was doing, and he got mad at me for answering? I just got in my car and drove away. Well, I'm glad that that could be the end of it. If he was willing to put his hands on you, man, these, things, these niggas are dangerous. Who knows what they would go with, baby man, man. Somebody said dodge the bullet for sure there. He didn't she didn't even dodge her when 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 he hit her. What? That's what I'm confused about. My god, just letting them just sock and bop you around. Like your head is more fun than a pillow fight. B fist her up. Put your hand inside. Get ready to have the time of your life. Number nine. Upside down. He stole something from me, was caught red-handed, and then denied it. Couldn't trust him, so I had to end our friendship. I don't know. What do you say to that? What do you say to that? It's hard to not lose respect for people when you catch them lying and they still go on that bullshit. And I hope it never happens to anybody that you're supposed to respect. That could owe you, I don't know, the benefit of, of, of treating you like somebody who's an adult that recognizes that you have fucking got them, bro. But instead, they just go on... Ooh, they gonna stand on this ship as it sinks, you fucking bitch. And I will never see you in a higher light again. Why? Why sabotage yourself like that? I don't know, baby. Number five. A girl that I was friends with threatened to call the company that I work for and make up something that I didn't do to get me fired because I refused to take a day off to spend time with her after a breakup. Bitch, what? What? I've seen and heard a lot of things, but what you mean? You called up this nigga job? I can't even stay. Oh my god. Oh. In front of my table? <laughs> although I although I offered to come over after work multiple days, I took a screenshot of her threat and told her I'd go straight to the police if she actually did it. What? I've had girls threaten it all. You think it's the biggest penis in the world. But I'm going to call your job and threaten to get you fired making some shit up because you're not spending time with me. Isn't it scary? Doesn't it scare you? Women, are you listening? Women, you know why it should scare you? Because a nigga without a job is a broke nigga. That's a broke nigga. A nigga without a job is a broke nigga. I'm a broke nigga. You want that? You like that? Listen to me. This bitch was so territorial. She said, I don't care how broke he is. He's mine. What you talking about? Work hours. Nope. Nope. Me hours. Me hours. What is it? What are the responses here? My advice to anyone else, uh, something like this happens, immediately inform your employer or HR so they can be aware. If they are not surprised by it, it will be less likely to overreact. Bitch, where the fuck y'all think y'all working? Where, where shit like this isn't embarrassing in and of itself. Can you imagine how embarrassing it would have to be to roll into HR talking about, hey, so I fucked around with this stupid bitch who knows me and has my contact information and can get the contact information of my workplace because she knows me enough to know where I work. And she's on that juvenile gingerbread middle school bullshit talking about, mm -hmm, he 
he blew this up and he put somebody and he a rapist and he like kids and it's like bro because your objective is to make this dude lose his job you mother fucking villain why live your life this way for this a measly amount of power so you can say i did that after you lonely sad shriveled up how my god i hope someone finds you know someone willing to lay with you surely it should be simple all they'd have to do is not know you fucking god um number four when my grandma got cancer god damn you wanna you wanna go heavier oreo suck can't make this shit up when my grandma got cancer and was supposed to go through chemo, so I needed emotional support from a friend, and she outright said to me that she would rather talk about the progress she made with a boy. You wanna really talk about cancer? How about my kissing technique when I was kissing the tip? You wanna talk, like, you wanna hear about my boy? My, my grandma and chemo. Shut up, oh, boring. That's a story ending. My story is just beginning. It's not really funny. But neither, I don't feel that. I don't feel funny. You know, number three, my kidneys failed. That's funny. <laughs> I'm fine. It's a fucking joke. What the fuck? They healed up. It's fine. He's fine. Bitch. None of this is real. This could be fake. All of this could be fiction. The only reason we read them is because somebody could make something up right now and it, it would be identical to something that has happened, is happening, or will happen. Like I said, we have no guarantee or verification, pending proof, that any of this is real. So we are more than entitled to laugh at these ridiculous stories that people are out here farming karma with. And I'm, what, spinning into quote-unquote content, bro? I love reading these, so I might as well share it. But my God... Take it with a grain of salt is all I'm saying to you. Take it with a grain of salt. My kidneys failed. Kids these days, you know, that's the nigga's username, bro. That's his username. It's not quite Oreo suck, but it's there, okay? Kids these days, you know, types, my kidneys failed. They healed up. Then I got a funny looking lab test a few months later. I told a friend, I think my kidneys are failing again. And she said lied loudly. Sorry, it's, it's really taking me over now. I gotta calm down. She sighed loudly and said, And? What's that got to do with me? She just, she just been complaining about her stupid lazy co-workers for about half an hour. But she couldn't bother to listen to me. That was the last time I talked to her. My kidneys are okay. That's what matters. Number two. I was the only one starting conversations, so I stopped talking and we never spoke again. You know, how to know that you're a guy talking to women. Fucking hell. Number one. Or, or... You're a girl, likely ignoring a shitload of other men, trying to talk to the one nigga that won't, don't want nothing to do with you because he got mad choices. And there are other people that have choices, but they're trying to talk to you and you ain't trying to talk to them. But you're just like, no, I don't want any of these people that are trying to get a hold of me. I'm trying to talk to that one guy that has that it wants nothing to do with me. And maybe you're the problem. Maybe something's wrong with you. You know what I mean? Maybe the dudes that would start talking to you would instantly lose your attention because what you actually like is being ignored. And you'll always be this broken. I'm kidding. Number one, she started using me as an alibi when cheating on her husband. Oh, as like a girlfriend, can you imagine? She didn't even ask me first. Not that I would have agreed to it. It was so audacious. And her husband was a super nice guy that I really enjoyed hanging out with. And she ruined that friendship too by using me as her alibi. Well, if he was a really nice guy that was was the really nice to hang out with, you should have given him a hand job, you know, and, and told him the truth during the hand job. Come on. It's not gay. It's not gay. 
Your wife is cheating on you. 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 This is the technique of the stroke. Understand it well, ladies. Your wife is cheating on you. Up, down, up, down, up, down. You know? I hope you enjoyed this list, yeah. See you later.